John Pittman, I own Fight Factory Boxing Club in Gloucester. And I, I first actually got involved in boxing when I was 11 years old. I um, got into like quite a lot of trouble at school and um, one of the teachers suggested that my dad take me to a boxing gym to sort of release some anger. Yeah. So um, that was what happened. So the first um, gym I ever, first boxing club I ever went to was called the Ebony Club. Um, the actual building was called the Ebony Club, but the, the, the club was called the Bronx ABC. And it was run by um, a guy called Dave Simmons, who um, previously boxed, I think, Commonwealth Games Olympics. Uh, he was probably one of the first real uh, well-known fighters from Gloucester. It was a lot different then. Like the, the, the style of coaching was, it was a lot tougher. Uh, I first went to the boxing gym thinking I was like the hardest kid in the world coming from a little village in Hardwick. Um, soon realised that I wasn't the hardest man in the world and got pasted every time I went there. Uh, for about three months. So the difference really between how it works now and how it worked then was you were literally put in the ring and it was sink or swim. Whereas now we really sort of like look after the kids and things are a lot more safeguarding issues and um, they, everything's a lot more controlled. So they don't really spar until they're ready to spar and then it's conditioned sparring. So the main thing that I really remember from the early days of coaching that I would tell every ever boxer that walks through the door is keep your hands up. You know, that's sort of protect yourself at all times is the first rule of boxing, really. Yeah. So I had a bit of a checkered history, really. Um, I had a motorbike accident uh, years ago. That's why I had to stop boxing. And I stopped before I really felt like I realised my potential. Um, I couldn't, couldn't even watch boxing on the telly. I had to really turn my back on it and it sort of really broke me not being able to fight anymore. So I went off the rails um, in quite a big way. It took me a long time to get myself back on track. Uh, started doing a little bit of um, pad work with a couple of lads I was training with in the gym. And it just sort of escalated from there really. It went from that to um, renting a small unit and that small unit went from that to like three times the size in about a month. And that was the start of it really. I never really thought I could make a living f through boxing without actually being a fighter. So when I started my first, my first gym, um, it was really just opening a place for people just to come and hit a bag. Um, people who haven't maybe got a garage and, and that's how it all started and it just went from strength to strength and here we are today. The things I really enjoy about coaching is, is taking, you know, seeing the kids come through the door and, and going on a journey with them really. You know, for instance, like um, Akeem Ennis Brown came, came to the gym when he was probably 14, 13 or 14 years old. And, you know, he was a rough diamond, you know, lacked a lot of discipline. And, you know, through a lot of hard work on his part and my part, you know, he's the youngest ever English champion, WBC World Youth Champion, IBF European Champion, uh, British and Commonwealth Champion, WBC International Champion, um, ranked number 15 in the world. That is by far my biggest achievement in boxing. But also, um, I think one of the biggest achievements that I can really say is, is turning my life around from being on the wrong side of the law, being involved in drugs to um, being someone in the community who can help people and help um, kids um, steer away from a life of crime and, and make them realise that you know they're good at something and there's positives there. Every day in the boxing gym there's banter, you know it's such a difficult sport that that's one way the lads get through it you know and in, in this gym, everybody just takes the piss out of everybody and nobody's really safe from any of that, so there's always something going on. Boxing is so important for the next generation because today's kids seem to have a lack of exercise with, you know, the Xbox generation, 
Um, there seems to be a lack of discipline. I mean, there's always been a lack of discipline in young people, you know, just because of the nature of their ages, um, hormones and all that sort of thing. But I think in, in this generation now, um, there seems to be so many kids who have no direction. There seems to be so many kids who, who never get told that they're good at anything. Um, there seems to be these amazing sports facilities that all these schools have got that nobody can actually use. Um, so I think that boxing is, is a way of teaching a lot of kids. I mean, it's not just inner city kids. It's kids from all walks of life. You know, they come into a boxing gym and, and you really find out about yourself. There's, there's, you know, it's a lonely place, a boxing ring, and um, you can really sort of learn a lot about yourself. And um, if you can put up with the training and take the punches, then it stands you in good stead for a, a lot of the hurdles that life will put in front of you. Starting with the amateurs, um, we got my son Jay. Um, Jay's won uh, box cups, he's won Western Counties titles. Unfortunately, this year he won't be able to go into the nationals, and we were really looking for him to be like looking for the win to win a national title this year. But we're away in Tenerife, so um, he's going to miss he's going to miss the um, championships this year. But Jay. Jay's one to watch. He hasn't he hasn't lost for like two years now, and, he, and he's really on a roll at the moment. Um, we've got a great bunch of um, young kids coming through. They're all around the same age, all quite raw at the moment, but they're all going to be sort of developing at the same sort of pace as well. Um, we've got um, Shabir Hadri, who's uh, just um, going to be getting his second pro fight coming up soon. He's a former um, amateur national champion. Uh, Max Mudway. We're looking for a Southern Area title fight, hopefully in November. Uh, we've got Akeem Ennis Brown, who's former British and Commonwealth champion, who got absolutely ripped off for his um, British title that everybody knows about. Um, we've had a few little issues with with Akeem, uh, with like small little injuries that he's had to overcome. But we're looking like end of the year. Hopefully, he'll be back in a big way, and um, we're gonna we're gonna really push forward for hopefully a European title, and then. You know, maybe even the world title if, if you know everything goes the way we plan. We're raising money for the um, the minibus at the moment, so which is going to benefit the kids massively. Um, going to shows as a team, uh, going to other clubs sparring as a team. Um, you know, when the big fights happen, that really is on. You know, like on Sky or BT Sports, then you know it's it's another way of getting people there. But um, you know, people, we we've had loads of. Um, Businesses donate money to us f via contacting me through Facebook, but um, we've had also individual people um, donate through our Just Giving page. We're going to do um, a big raffle as well. We're going to do um, a sponsored day where all the young kids can uh, maybe have a little bit of a spar in front of their families and their friends, and you know everyone can come in sort of like chuck a few quid in the bucket. Uh, we're hoping to raise about between twelve and fourteen thousand. Um, I think we've got about six and a half at the moment. And the reason that we want to raise a lot of money is because, you know, some of the shows that we go to are, are like the length and breadth of Great Britain. And, um, you know, we, we could have bought a minibus for, say, like three and a half, four grand. But then we don't want to be sat on the M6 at three o'clock in the morning with a load of kids sat on the, on the side of the motorway because, you know, we've had to scrimp and save to buy something that's a bit old. So we're, we're sort of aiming our sights quite high. We've also um, gone for lottery funding as well, so we're waiting to hear back from them. So if we get that as well, we'll be sort of well on our way for hitting the target then. So Fight Factory is not just about the boxing. Um, we've got a massive community spirit here. We, we, we train, um, we've got fitness classes right from four-year-old, five-year-old kids up to adults. So our fitness classes that we cater for for adults are mainly packed with people that are never ever going to box. They're all shapes and sizes from all walks of life. And Fight Factory seems to be a place where a lot of people who don't really like other gyms end up. Um, there's a massive community spirit here. Everyone gets on. We all have social events. Everyone comes to watch the other lads fight. So it's, it's like a big community spirit here. So it's, you know don't be intimidated about walking into Fight Factory because you'll have a big surprise, you know, everyone's really welcoming, everyone's here to help each other and everyone's here to encourage and push each other on. 
you can contact me through through um, Fight Factory website or through Facebook. Um, if it's a child, then what normally happens is the parents would ring up. Um, I would tell them, you know, come along on a Monday or Wednesday at six o'clock. They turn up with a kid. The kid gets involved in the session, um, and it's just as easy as that, really. Just turn up at turn up at my gym, turn up at your local boxing gym, and, and just get involved. Mm -hmm.